Please welcome Nick Thompson, CEO of The Atlantic. Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to our ideas stage. I'm Nicholas Thompson. I'm the CEO of The Atlantic, and I'm joined by Tom Fanny, the CEO of Southern Company. How are you? Oh, man, I'm doing great. Great to be here. We're delighted to have you here. Let's start with cyber war. Let's do it. You know a lot about cybersecurity. You work with the president on it. It's a big passion. But most importantly, when the next big conflict comes, the hackers are coming after you. Tell me about how you think about protecting your infrastructure. So uh, the fascinating thing is to reimagine national defense in America. In the old days, we had these models where we had the Soviet Union on our right, NATO on our left, and we had a tank battle on Poland. Today, the battle is on our uh, telecom networks. It's our electricity grid. It's our financial system. And the reimagination of the private sector with the government is that mm -hmm. the private sector cannot be protected by wars fought on other people's beaches. It is here, and we must join in the effort to protect this nation's national security. So how does that work? Explain how you work with the government. So two different ways, kind of big ideas, though. Mm -hmm. One is what we call, unfortunately, in the Cyberspace Solarium Commission, SICI. Mm -hmm. Systemically important, critical infrastructure. You can't protect everything. I'm not after punks, thugs, and criminals. Mm -hmm. I am after preventing the existential threat from being visited. So what we got to do is identify where things in America are most important to preserve our way of life. Yep. And then once we do that, and that's a very hard job, then we create a joint collaborative environment with the government. So it's the intelligence community, mm -hmm. it's our sector of specific agencies, it's the private sector, and it's the guys that will hold the bad guys accountable. So DOD, Secret Service, FBI, U.S. Cyber Command. We are all in the same place, either physically or virtually, and the aspiration is that in real time, we will see everything going on among and between us. So you have to protect the things most important in the American way of life. So the electric grid, power, football stadiums. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> hey, but it's not just that, right? So we have to know what's coming across the border. Yeah. They have to see what's happening. And there is joint, I would argue, compared to where we are today, benefits and burdens. So much of private enterprise today has been structured with the idea of separating ourselves from yeah. government can't do that anymore. We really need to turn that on its head and join with government for national and security. And tell me the framework for how you think about protecting your own systems. Yeah, so look, the, we get attacked millions of times a day. Any company like mine is. We're, we're reasonably big. Southern Company's about the size of the nation of Australia in terms of energy production. And so we think about it not in terms of, oh, we got to protect a particular plant or a particular asset. It really is the idea of the electricity nervous system in the southeast. That's our power management systems. So we want to make sure that whatever we have there is protected as well as it can. Obviously, step two, let's have something else that works in real time in an undisclosed location where we can protect both those. If this one goes out, that one picks it up. If both of them go out, we have a strategy called spare tire. And it's just like your car. Well, mm -hmm. you have your blowout, you put that ugly thing on your car, and it'll get you from the accident to a gas station. And we can run the power system in that manner. It'll be a little ugly. I wouldn't want to run a power market with it. Voltage swings, but we can still survive. Mm -hmm. The final one is very interesting, and it's called MacGyver. Mm -hmm. Let's figure out a way to withdraw from the digital age. It's roughly the way the electricity systems in America were run in the 50s. And so what we will do is effectively run the system manually. Unfortunately, all those people that used to do that in the 50s are probably dead. And so we've got to rethink how to run the system and rethink how, during the worst of times, we can keep the lights on. Well, I'm hopeful we never get the spare tire. Yeah, I'm man, certainly hopeful we never get to MacGyver, <laughs> but I'm glad you're thinking about it. Let's talk about electricity sources. Clearly, the mix of places and methods from which you get electricity is going to change a lot over the next 20 years. Tell oh, yeah. me where you are now and where you're going. Listen, the world is on a march to net zero, and we've got to get there as well. We've committed. We were one of the first companies to commit to net zero by 50. I know the Biden administration wants to accelerate that as near as 35, so we'll see what we can do. Um, we're absolutely in favor of helping to support that initiative. In order to get there, transitioning away from 
uh, fossil fuels. We put in place a goal to get 50% reductions by 2030. We did it a decade early. We did mm -hmm. it in 2020. But getting from 2020, 50%, yep. to 100% is a different kettle of fish. Here's what it's going to look like at the end of the day. In the southeast, about 50% of our energy will come from renewables. It's going to be mostly solar. We just don't have wind flows. Our wind is imported from places like Kansas and Oklahoma. Yep. It's going to be about 20% nuclear. The rest of it is going to be a combination of a variety of other things. could be hydrogen. It could be storage. It could be some pretty cool stuff. But it might be natural gas. Mm -hmm. When it's natural gas... What we're going to do, I think, is capture the carbon effluent from the production of energy with natural gas, or what we will do is offset carbon emissions with net negative strategies, whether that's bio, whether it's direct air capture, or some hybrid. Let's start with the 20% nuclear. How are you going to get to 20% nuclear? Well, we're kind of already there. And in fact, Southern Company is the only company in America that's building new nuclear. Hopefully, we'll bring it online in 22 and 23. But it's the only real new nuclear plant in a generation of Americans. It's been like 40 years. Right. And how are you dealing with storage and all the questions about that? Uh, used fuel storage. Well, so we've got plenty of capacity on site. Mm -hmm. And one day, what I would love to do is reuse that fuel, because there's plenty of energy left in that stuff. And, and, and I think we can reprocess, reuse, and that should be the future of America. So many people are irrationally afraid of that, right. but we should get there. I'm, I'm on, on Team Nuclear with you, so off we go. Excellent. Let's talk a little bit about resiliency. <laughs> We had a stormy morning this yeah. morning. It got blown off to the side of the street. Obviously, with climate change, we're going to have crazier times. How are you going to make sure your infrastructure doesn't fall down and all your solar panels don't blow away? So, Nick, this is the big deal. This, this, this centuries-old industry of mine has been built on the premise of reliability. That is how your system performs during normal conditions. The new deal is, whether it's cyber, physical, weather, you name it, is resilience. That is, how does your system perform under unnatural circumstances? And in fact, I help lead something called the Electricity Subsector Coordinating Council, where we run the national response events. So when you see these 20,000 people coming into Louisiana to help, I help. Mm -hmm. orchestrate some of that stuff. Okay. What you have to think about now are, when you think about normal distributions of outcomes, work more in the tail. Mm -hmm. What if uh, winter storm Uri in Texas, they plan for, say, 10 degrees of weather on the average through the day over a period of time. But what if it's zero? Right. What is the marginal cost to protect versus the marginal benefit that could be enormous. Mm -hmm. And so I think we need to rethink all of those equations. We're doing that today at Southern Company. All right. Well, we are almost out of time, but it's lovely to hear about a man who runs a company, spends half his time trying to protect it from hackers, half the time making sure it stands up and getting power to everyone. Thank you so much, Tom Fanning. Nick, great being with you. See you, bud. Cool.